one big piece of parenting, <clears throat> hopefully, is marriage. Mm. And so I'm curious, how do you think about your role as from a marriage standpoint and applying that to parenting? Do you have different values as a married couple than you do as parents? Walk me through the thought there. I, well, go ahead, honey. I'm I then. think we have similar values, but totally different ways to get to them. You know, if we just, um, I'm the kind of person who does not like to inconvenience people, you know, at all. If, if I go into a movie theater and it's all full except for the middle seat, which is prime, or a seat that's just right on the end but in front of a post, I'll go in front of the post. <laughs> And so, but I can't see. But and I'll go right him, to that middle seat. I mean, I don't care. All those it's a good <laughs> seat. I can get to it quickly. And yeah. <laughs> we'll get the best seat. I mean, I just, I think that they are, our values are the same, but we do it differently. And I, it is really a challenge. Um, we know because we've talked mm -hmm. about this a little bit, about the fact that we're just at odds a lot because we do things differently. But again, we have this meeting on Sunday, and so we can air some things out. And sometimes I can't wait. I just can't wait. I, just blast. I think the intersection, <laughs> though, between the parenting and the, and the marriage is often letting your kids know this is hard. I mean, we, I remember little Shawnee, who was our most sensitive little daughter, and I was telling her one night while I was tucking her in bed, I had a thing where, by the way, we haven't even really got to, you know, bedtimes are so fabulously important for it. And they get even more important as kids get older because you get an adolescent. He'll, the later it is, they'll tell you anything. <laughs> During the day, they won't, but late at night. But I had this tradition where I'd go and I'd, I'd put their little face in my hands and just before, after the story or the prayer or whatever, I'd just look them in the eye and say, I love you. And I did that with Shawnee one night. And I don't know why I even said this, but I said, Shawnee, I just I love you so much. There's only one person in the world I love just a little bit more than you, and that's your mom. And she teared up. She started, <laughs> big tears came to her. You love mom like, more than me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, you know, it was just the funniest thing because she thought about it for a minute, and then she got a different look on her face, and she's like, that's okay, Daddy. And I, I kids, <sighs> kids develop enormous reassurance from seeing how much their parents love each other. And so when you have an argument or when you have a disagreement, and kids are smart. They can tell when they're, you know, mom and dad were not too happy with each other last night. That's okay. I mean, we've had people say, oh, hey, wait, my, my mom and dad never had a disagreement. Mm -hmm. They never argued. I've been really scared for those kids. Their parents <laughs> hid that. Yeah. They're going to have unrealistic expectations. The important thing is be real, but let them see you make up. I mean, nothing is more. I would I would grab Linda and dip her and give her a kiss right in the pre. Mm -hmm. You know, we worked that out. It, I'm so sorry you guys had to see that last night, but just know, I mean, it's wonderful. And so I think you have to do that, and you have to let them know the children that uh, they're really really important to you. But there's one person that's more, and that's the spouse. That's that's where it all starts. You know, did you realize you guys are going to live to be in your 80s or 90s? You, you will have Drew with you in your home for less than one-fifth of your life. Mm. The other four-fifths. Sorry. Drew won't be there. <laughs> that's. I mean, there's two lessons in that. One is how quick the time goes by and how we have to prioritize mm. these kids while we have them. But the other one is the other, the other four-fifths, well, First fifth, you didn't have your each other either, but the other three fifths, you'll it'll be you two. You know that's the relationship that lasts forever. Kids all have their own spouse, their own family, and so on. Mm -hmm. But that's number one. That's number one right there. And it's so important that the kids know that. I, you know, even though we do disagree and <laughs> and the kids side with one or the other of us one sometimes, but I think we always resolve it enough that they know that. We are each other's first priority. In the, in the event there's a disagreement, say we're live in a situation and Drew does something and Linda thinks it should be responded to in this way mm -hmm. and Richard thinks it should be responded sure. to in this way. How does that situation get resolved? 
because that's caused tension in our marriage where it's like Sean yeah. and I, Sean and I oh, are having yeah. a, st- a, a stare off of like, yeah. <laughs> I need to take, you know, this. So <laughs> is it you, you or is it me? You got to, you got to table that one until later. Right. Mm-hmm. And then work it out later that night. But I, I will say one interesting thing. Sometimes when you're on one corner and you're on another corner, what are your options? Well, you can do my thing or you can do your thing or you can try to find some compromise in between or you might find a third alternative that neither of you have ever thought of before that doesn't come from one or the other of you so neither one's a loser and one's a winner. And that's that actually that's the that's the purpose we think parenting books and our sort of thing we do with lectures and so on. It's much easier for Andrew to say you know, maybe there's a, a third alternative that's better than what either of us were going to do. And by the way, it's not mine and it's not yours. It comes from here. And we like this person and we think he's wise and he's had experience. Let's go with that one. Mm-hmm. And now you're on the same page and you don't have to decide who won that argument, right? But I think I, a lot of times it, it's uh, that look, that look yeah, like yeah. you are doing this <laughs> wrong, but not saying anything, mm-hmm. but then not letting the kid do it. And then we talk about it afterwards and... And so many times, Richard's so good about this. He's like, oh, yeah, that I blew that. Yeah, sorry. I'll go back and tell him. And so he does go back and say, I think your mom's right in that case. You should do this, which really means a lot to me. But, I mean, that look is really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not you the only one that gets not doing this right. I'm pretty yeah. sure you guys are way ahead of us on this. But there's two always reliable ways to end a conflict or an argument. And you can take your pick, largely based on your faith tradition. But, but one of them is to pray. You know, when when two when two married people pray together, that's the last resort. I mean, you know, Abraham Lincoln actually said this. I don't think he was talking about his marriage, but he said there are times in life when I am driven to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I have nowhere else to go. Mm. And I I've been in our we've been in arguments, Linda and I, where we. There's no more to say. We're, we're stuck, you know. Mm-hmm. After the we've only, stayed up all night. Okay? <laughs> and the only way to break it is to kneel down and pray together. And that's a whole, that's like a blanket and everything changes. The chemistry changes and so on. The other less, less sort of spiritual way to change it is just a simple technique. And everyone talks about this in different ways. Carl Rogers, the great analyst, called it Rogerian technique. He named it after himself, but... It's simply that before I can make my point, I have to rephrase what you just said to your satisfaction. I, I'm ready to argue with you, but before I can make my point, I have to paraphrase what you just said to me well enough that you'll say, yeah, that is what I meant. And then I go and make my thing. Man, that diffuses an argument so fast. Mm. 